In this video, I want to tell you a little bit about sign language families and about how we can study the historical linguistics of sign languages. There are indeed many families of sign languages in the world. ASL, or the American Sign Language, is used here in the US and Canada, also in parts of South America and Africa, and it is related to the French Sign Language family. More about that in a minute. But I do want you to, to see how there's a, a lot of diversity in the sign languages used in the world. And that there were sign languages used by indigenous populations here in North America. This is an example of the plain sign language, which was signed here in the western part of the US and southern Canada, and was used by numerous indigenous communities as a kind of trade language. This example is from 1930, and by the way, I want to take the opportunity to point out that the video says that he is C, which is um, what we call an exonym. It's the name that outsiders gave the community at the time. The community prefers to be called Tsutina. This is an endonym, the, the name that the community gives themselves. And it is the name that we should prefer, the, ones that, the one that the community prefers to use for themselves. You can see in this whole video that this is precious evidence for how the language was used at the time. It is not the only indigenous sign language. The Inuit sign language was used here. I think we had an example a couple of weeks ago. And the Plateau sign language was used here as well. The plain sign language is still used to this day. Take a look at a few example works from PSL versus ASL. So this language is still in use by many indigenous communities in North America. Regarding ASL, it is related to the French sign language, and you can see a part of the family here. This is because it was um, heavily influenced, if not created, by a group of uh, by a French teacher who came to North America. There was a school in France that was founded in the 1960s by uh, a person called Lepe. And a teacher of that school came to North America in the early 1800s. And that's how ASL got started, because that school started teaching the old French sign language to children. And that's where ASL started in the US. You can see how um, ASL is related to other languages like the modern French sign language, Belgian, Flemish, Dutch, and Italian sign languages as well. This means, as we saw during the week, that they're going to have similar words and similar grammatical structures. It is very difficult to study historical linguistics and sign languages, first of all, because they have no writing. So there's only, uh, we can only go so far into the past. We know that people have always used sign languages because we find references to them in the works of Greek philosophers, for example, throughout history. Um, people have noted that uh, sign languages are used. This is an example of how the manual alphabet for the sign language of Spain was used in 1620. And this is a drawing from 1880 of the plain sign language word for sun. So we can use these uh, few precious pictures that we have and starting in the 1850s old movies to study how sign languages were used in the past. From that information, the, the very first thing that we can guess is that words do change, same as in spoken languages. For example, there's drawings for the sign language of Spain that indicate that the word accompany was probably done like this in 1851, with your fingers extended and with a forward motion, something like this. 150 years later, the word has changed quite a bit. Now the fingers are not extended but bunched up, and the motion is sideways and not back to front. So words can change just as like in a spoken language. What kind of changes do signs uh, go through? Pretty much the same. For example, we have uh, phonetic assimilation. This is the ASL sign for depend. The old form has one hand with the fingers extended, the non-dominant uh, hand, and then the dominant hand with one finger extended, the index finger. And then the motion would be like this. So this is the older form. Over time, the sign evolved to have both hands 
with a pointed gesture like she is doing. So as you can see, we had different forms of the finger and then this hand assimilated to the shape of the dominant hand. So now we have a single uh, form. This uh, phoneme essentially became more similar to the one in the dominant hand. This is a case of assimilation. You can have a feature change over time, a phonological feature. For example, the old form of the verb to feel in ASL was done with this finger like this and then like this. If you look at it very closely, you'll notice that the old form is done contralaterally, is done on the other side of the torso. So if I'm doing it with my right hand, it needs to be on the left side of the torso. In the newer form, what she is doing, if you look at her closely, you'll see that uh, the gesture is on the same side of the torso as her arm. The new form is like this. Right arm, right hand of the torso. So this motion, uh, doing it on the opposite side is called contralateral, and this one is called ipsilateral. So this feature has changed in the production of the sign for to feel. This is a ch the change of a feature, same as changing voicing or changing a place of articulation. We also have phenomena uh, like grammaticalization, where a consonant word becomes a morpheme. For example, we saw uh, how some how there were words in Latin, there were verbs like abeo, which shortened their form in Spanish and then eventually became morphemes of the verb. We can also see this process in sign languages. For example, on the left, we're going to see the sentence, the class is almost done. Uh, the verb, is, which is the final sign, is going to be like this. Take a look. Class almost done. Again. Class almost done. Finish. So the verb to finish is has a sweeping motion downwards and then up. The second sentence is, I wrote the story. And here, finish is an aspectual marker. It's going to be reduced because this is no longer the full verb. This is now an aspect morpheme that tells you that the verb to write is, fin is done, that the action is finished, uh, that is essentially a perfect or completive aspect. You're also going to notice that because it's a morpheme and not a word, it's shorter. Take a look. The motion for to finish is higher and shorter again. Mm -hmm. So complete, right. The, the verb to finish essentially became a morpheme for the uh, perfective aspect. Another example of this is this word in German sign language. The word reason has your fingers like this and then one, two, three taps on the palm. And it's going to be the first sign in this sentence. I don't understand the reason. Reason. I not understand. Again, notice the three taps. One, two, three. So this is the full word reason. However, there's a related sign, which means because, which is, has a reduced phonological form. It's one, two. Only two taps and quicker taps as well. This is in I'm sad because my grandmother has died. I sad because my grandmother die. Take a look again at how the this sign is just two taps. Oh, sorry. One, two. There we go. Mm -hmm. So the full noun reason has now become the uh, function word because. Its meaning changed over time and also its phonological form became simplified. In summary, there's numerous sign language families. ASL become, belongs to the French sign language family because French teachers brought it to North America. There, there were already sign languages in North America, including many indigenous sign languages. And it is obviously very difficult to study historical linguistics in them because we need to do so through very few precious drawings that survive and through older movies. And when we study them, we see that the changes in the science are very similar to the changes in the words in spoken languages, like featural assimilation and the transformation of words into morphine.